disruption in the GOP-led House sparking, of course, the ouster of Speaker McCarthy. It's from a small faction of ultra-conservative Republicans. Uh, they made that vote happen. It might have been something predicted long ago. Watch this. Uh, we obviously have seen the back and forth between different members of the party. Uh, Congressman Mike Lawler going on to accuse that group of eight of torpedoing the party by taking out the Republicans, quote, best player on the field. Uh, now many wonder if Republicans can get back on the same page ahead of the new November 14th deadline to fund the government. For more, we're joined right now by Montana Republican Congressman Matt Rosendale, one of the eight who voted to end McCarthy's speakership. First, I've got to ask you, Congressman, for, I mean, thank you for being here, but how does it feel? How does it I feel can't... to be a part of something that's never happened in history? I take no pleasure in having to remove Speaker McCarthy. I mean, I truly do not. However, it's in the best interest of our nation to make sure that we rein in this complete out of control spending. Uh, we've been lectured, many of us have been lectured over the last several weeks, over the last several months about trying to force us to just basically comply and to go along with things uh, as they have been done for many years. And, and I'll tell you, Adrian, I'm tired of being lectured by people who have basically been the architects of a $33 trillion national debt, which is absolutely crushing every single person across our country. Who are we you better start doing something different. Who are you specifically talking Excuse about? Me? Who are you specifically talking about lecturing you? I'm talking about any of the members that have been around here for several decades that have been the architects of a $33 trillion debt that are telling us we are wrong because we're trying to comply with the Budget Act of 1974, which demands that we have the appropriation bills uh, ready to be delivered to the Senate by June 30, which is all we were asking for, to, to abide by uh, the appropriations process. And we've been able to get a very conservative agenda passed during the 118th Congress. H.R. 1, which was the domestic energy policy. H.R. 2, which was the most comprehensive and conservative border security and immigration uh, legislation that, that I've been told that has ever been passed here uh, in Washington. Uh, the National Defense Act, which was passed with all Republican votes. So we've done a lot of really conservative things. And the only time that we lost the conservative agenda was when Kevin McCarthy went behind the Republican conference and was able to retain a, a majority of Democrat votes in order to pass these massive spending measures. And it's wrong. What, what do you say to people who say, I mean, that you all did the same thing? Because this could not have happened. His ouster could not have happened if you didn't have Democrats voting in agreement with the eight of you to oust the speaker. Was it working with Democrats? I will tell you that when you look at the budget uh, deal that Kevin McCarthy struck with the president, not with the Republican conference, with the president, after we had already worked together and 218 Republicans came together and passed a debt ceiling package that was going to claw back residual revenue that was available that hadn't been spent during COVID, Green New Deal provisions, claw that res uh, uh, revenue back again, freeze our spending at the fiscal 22 levels and raise the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion. And he went to the president outside of the conference and raised the debt ceiling basically by $4 trillion, extending it to January of 25. That legislation, when it left the, the House, had 169 Democrats support it and only 145 Republicans. Yeah. He went and solicited the votes from the Democrats. We just saw a continuing resolution that every Democrat but one voted for on the House floor. 209. I, I and wanna, 91 Republicans voted against it. I want to make sure that I ask you about reports that you were actually praying uh, ahead of all of this, ahead of this year, for a slim majority in the House. You were secretly praying, which I guess all prayers are secret because God God hears them. But can you explain uh, why that was important for you? And, and particularly, was that intentional as leverage to make this a more conservative Congress? From, from your lips to God's ears, Adrian, uh, I did uh, seek a, a thin majority because I knew that it was going to give us the ability to put forward the conservative agenda that this nation needs. We are $33 trillion in debt. And the people that are here, the architects of that debt, are unwilling to do anything about it. We saw a report came out just today that during COVID, the federal government spent over $3 billion 
on furniture. And you don't think that we should abide by the Budget Act just to say that we're going to review all the government spending? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.